did was to try this uh, RTSL uh, gene, and the way we did it was first by putting a plasmid expressing Cas9 in the cell, and then transforming together in the cell another plasmid carrying a CRISPR program to target this RTSL gene, together with an oligonucleotide that carries a mutation we want to introduce. And we do this transformation not just in any coli cell, but in this HME63 cell uh, that express some phase recombinases that will promote the integration of this oligonucleotide at the uh, target position. And the way this works is that uh, the phase recombinases introduce a mutation, and the CRISPR system, by introducing the break, is actually going to kill all the cells that did not introduce this mutation. What you see here is that the mutation by itself is introduced at a frequency of around 10 to minus 10, but then by killing all the cells that do not introduce the mutation, we can select for population where almost all of the cells carry the desired mutation. So this tool has been improved upon by uh, many groups and adapted to many bacterial species. I just want to mention two interesting pieces of work uh, in this paper published a few months ago uh, uh, by uh, Garth et al. Uh, they uh, improve on the technique and design uh, this editing construct, what they call the create cassette, where they program a guide RNA and a, a template uh, for repair, everything on a small piece of DNA that can fit in a, 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 an oligonucleotide. And that's very interesting because if you can fit everything on an oligonucleotide, then you can make that as a library, generate that on chip and obtain a lot of oligos uh, to target simultaneously many positions in the genome and create libraries of and so this is what they did in this paper uh, that is uh, uh, very interesting. Um, another uh, uh, interesting study is this work that was uh, done by the group of uh, uh, Jason Chin, where they actually used a strategy to, uh, CRISPR strategy, to introduce many, many mutations uh, in, the, in, in the chromosome of E. coli to basically change the codon usage uh, uh, in, the, in the chromosome. And the way they do that is by providing the synthetic DNA that they, they, they have modified on uh, bacterial artificial chromosome, and then they exchange that piece of DNA with the chromosome by introducing four breaks. Two breaks on the bacterial artificial chromosome and also two breaks in the Richerichai coli chromosome. And here too, the uh, phase recombination are used to promote then the integration of this artificial piece of DNA into the chromosome uh, here. And they show that like this, you can do very extensive modifications of the bacterial uh, chromosome. So now I want to talk to you about another application of this uh, uh, Cas9 uh, cleavage because if you remember I told you that Cas9 is actually very efficient at killing bacteria when it cuts in the chromosome. And so a few years ago we thought, what if we could use this as an antimicrobial strategy? Could we program uh, Cas9 to target virulence factors, antibiotic resistance gene, and specifically kill the bacteria that carry this gene? And the thing is that to be able to do that efficiently, you need a good way to deliver this CRISPR system to all the bacteria in a, in a target population. And to do that, uh, we decided to co op uh, phages. We use the cascade of bacterial phages as vectors, we call for phage with vectors. Uh, that we program to carry Cas9 and a CRISPR that will produce a guide RNA to target uh, uh, an antibiotic resistance gene in the chromosome here. And you see that when we do that, what you, you see here is uh, loads on, of Staphylococcus aureus on an agar plate, and then we spot a, a, a few microiders of this uh, CRISPR phage meat preparation. And what you see here is that only when uh, the bacteria 